you watched Dynamite last Wednesday night and said to yourself, God, that sucked. That's your go-home Dynamite before the pay-per-view? The pay-per-view's gonna suck. I couldn't blame you for thinking that because there was a big piece of me that thought that that was how it was gonna turn out too. Because Dynamite was hot garbage Wednesday night. I said, revolution got to be better, doesn't it? I almost didn't pay for the show and watch it, but I ultimately did. Gave him a chance. And admittedly, I'm glad I did. It wasn't perfect. Had some things that certainly annoyed me, but I come to expect that with AEW. But it was generally time well spent on a Sunday night. And it ended before midnight Eastern. So I'll give credit where credit is due. But let's talk about AEW Revolution. Me! Me! I really thought this show got off to a damn solid, if not hell of a start with its first two matches. You kick off with Chris Jericho versus Ricky Starks. Of course Jericho wants to come out first. And so that way all the dopey fans can sing, Judas, <laughs> shut up. But whatever. I was actually more irritated by the fact that the damn fans were chanting for him at points during the match. No! If you like Jericho, then chant for Ricky Starks. Help get Ricky Starks even more over, damn you! Get it right! But annoying grievances aside, this opener was really damn good. It told the story, the right guy won. In terms of the actual match, and you're talking about opening up a pay-per-view, this was about damn near perfect. Did its job, was good, but wasn't trying to sit there and go knock everybody's damn socks off so much where it overshadowed the next several matches on the card. These guys knew their role, knew their fit, and got in where they were supposed to. And next up, you had Christian Cage versus Jungle Jack. And what was great about this match is it was a street fight. It felt like a street fight. Guys were kind of dressed for a street fight. They avoided the flippy shit, especially Jungle Jack. So it had an element of authenticity to it that most Jungle Jack matches do not have. The match told the story, following up on months of story, so there was actually a reason to care. Christian had heat. Fans are behind Jungle Jack. Wonderful. This is easily one of the best matches of the night. And to me, easily Jack's best match in AEW to date. I know you're going to have those that talk about the Texas death match was better or the main event was better. And I might grant you the main event. I won't grant you the Texas death match. But this Christian Cage versus Jungle Jack match was really, really damn good. So through two matches on this show, AEW was cooking up something really nice. And since it's an AEW pay-per-view, I know inevitably I'm going to get some type of bucks a suck in Kenny Omega match. And at least they were all together here in one body. It's the House of Black versus the Elite for the Trios Championship. And I gotta say, the reaction for when the Elite came out was really mid, if not tepid. The fans were more into him once the match got going and he's got so all their flippy fuck stuff. But before that, that reaction was not great. I'm just saying, those guys are supposed to mean a lot to this company. It wasn't that. I will also knock the fans in this match. Stop chanting this is awesome! It's corny, it's dumb, especially at an AEW show. You want to do some damn WWE shit, do it at a WWE show. Say something like this match rocks or this match fucks. Something! Like, give me a fucking break. And I just really hate the Elite's matches. I really do. They're flippy fuck, nonsensical, no psychology having asses. Go out there and just bump around. And eventually the low standard nerds in the fan, in, in the crowd, eventually get on board. Whatever. But this shit doesn't mean anything. That said, this match was less annoying to me than some other bodies of work that they've had during their time in the company. But I didn't enjoy it that much. I really didn't. I was just waiting for this shit to get over, but that's okay. Hey, wrestling at its best as a variety show has something for everyone. It could be for you. It absolutely is not fucking for me. Live with it. Just me or was the AEW Women's Championship triple threat really just blah? Like, it left no real impression to me at all, the actual match itself. The only thing I really remember at this point is Ruby Soho joining with Soraya and Tony Storm. I'm supposed to care about that. That's supposed to matter. That's supposed to make me feel some type of way. It certainly doesn't. 
And honestly, when you talk about AEW and the way they book their women's division, it is very clear that fans continue to not care about them very much. And you look at this match and then your big surprise turn, and it's not hard to see why fans don't care. This stuff sucks. Look at me, God, I'm so pretty. Me, me. And now we get to the Texas death match. Hangman Page versus John Moxley. Was well, this an Abdullah the Butcher tribute match? First to give their opponent Hep C wins? What's this deal with stabbing somebody with a fork and making them bleed the hard way? And of course it took Moxley like absolutely no time to bleed. That dude woke up bleeding. I'm going to call him Moxley the menstrual cycle because every time he'd turn around he's fucking bleeding and ragging. I'm just saying, dude, Jesus Christ. Of course, this match was all types of brutal and violent. And for those that are going to say, well, ECW used to be like that. Hey, they sure did. You know, and ECW had a place and a time. It was also a different time in the wrestling business. Like, I look at this match and say it just wasn't for me. I don't even hate it. Honestly, the only thing that really annoyed me were a couple of things with this match. One, those brick spots. Like, you're smashing Hangman Page's hand with a brick that is laying on another brick. Anybody would sit there and think, that person's got a bunch of broken bones in their hands. They shouldn't be doing anything with that hand the rest of that match. They should be selling that the rest of the match. He did multiple brick spots and no real consequence to it. And then the finish, like after all that kind of crazy cycle crap that these guys did, the cutting themselves and each other with barbed wire, all the other spots, it ends by having Hangman Page dangle Moxley over the ropes with a freaking chain, so just as Moxley's starting to choke a little bit, he taps out. It was kind of underwhelming. It really was. And that's the problem, I think, a lot of times with these modern wrestling matches. They do all of this shit during the match, and there's no build-up to the finish. The finish just feels like it comes out of fucking nowhere because these guys are tapped out. They don't know what the hell else to do. So, terrible isn't the word I would put for it. Just not my flavor. I didn't think that this rivalry personally necessitated a Texas death match. And maybe if you didn't see several other people bleeding, you know, throughout the night... Maybe it has more impact. I don't know. That's just me. But like I said, not for me. Call me the old guy all you want. Wardlow and Samoa Joe for the TNT title. It was a really hard spot to be in. Come back and do a standard wrestling match right after the Texas death match. Kind of a death spot to be in on the card a little bit. And these guys, I think they, they, they're best. Like, you're only going to be able to do so much. Um, one, one knock I got here. Wardlow should not be doing a senton bomb off the top rope as a throwaway, throwaway move in mid-fucking match. Like, AEW does a really terrible job with how they feature their bigger wrestlers, and that to me is a perfect example of that. You have to issue an edict to guys like that and say, if you do something like that, it needs to really matter in a really big spot, not be a throwaway spot in mid-fucking match. We don't have a ton of giant guys to begin with, so we need you to actually be bigger guys, not work like the goddamn lightweights on the roster. But that said, they did what they could do. They were in a tough spot, and now you've got Warlow taking out Powerhouse Hobbs on Dynamite. It's a match I would rather see on pay-per-view personally, but hey, whatever. Look at me, God, I'm so pretty! Me! Me! Oh, hello there. Long time no see. My name is Karen, and I like carrots and oats. Yes, me, me. And of course, you should know me. I am the horse-faced bitch of a wife. They just fucking get it. Me, me. And let me tell you something. You mule-faced hussy, Aubrey Edwards. You put your hands on my man again, and I will make you into goddamn glue. Yes, Jarrett is where my fillies come from. Me. There is only one horse-faced bitch of a wife. They just fucking get it. And that is 
Me, the horse face bitch of a wife, they just fucking get it. I will beat that bitch's ass six ways from Sunday. Don't touch my man. He is the founder, bitch. Can I get you? Fucking mule face. Me, me. And then we get to the tag team title match. It's a new year, Jeff. You're not gonna do this. It's like the longest troll of all time. You're better than this. You don't have to give in. But I must. Because they just keep pushing. It's a new year and it's the same bullshit. himself, Mr. Run Impact into the goddamn ground, Mr. Slapnuts, oh, look at my Jackie Fargo stuff, I do it better than Ric Flair, I do it better than Ric Flair, I do it better than shut the fuck up, his hair, his look is even more idiotic than it was 10 years ago, let alone 20 years ago, which is goddamn saying something, and the fact that they would even dare put him in this spot is ridiculous, the fact that Tony Khan would go out of his way to make it look like goddamn Jeff Jarrett could win the fucking tag team titles. I take as a personal thing and insult towards me and every decent remaining wrestling fan out there. It is goddamn 2023. Enough with this no talent, no money drawn has been ass. No wonder his dad wanted to die because he didn't want to be associated with this piece of human garbage anymore. It will once and forever and always be key to remember above anything else. Fuck Jeff Jarrett! 2023 and that piece of crap! You're still getting booked on pay-per-views! Anyways, let's move on to more important business. The main event. The 60-minute Iron Man match. It started off slow, but these guys built my interest throughout the 60 minutes. This ended up being a fantastic match. The way they paced it, the way they would run hot and cold, do some stuff and then slow down, do some stuff and then slow down. Actually try to work the crowd. Apparently it's a thing where people are bitching about MJF throwing a drink on a damn kid. Look at what ultimately happened. I don't give a fuck what you want to say. Oh my God, the kid got a drink poured on him. So that way he had to go in the back and meet the talent and meet his favorite wrestler, Powerhouse Hobbs. Oh, boo fucking who. MJF helped that kid get a lifelong memory that he's going to remember much more than he ever would just go into that damn pay-per-view. Should he have done it, especially if it wasn't planned? Probably not. But shit happens. Like, it's wrestling, damn it. It's not fucking ballet. Get over it. People just find reasons to bitch about anything now, fucking days. Give me a break. God damn. But, this match was really, really well done. I liked even how they did the pinfalls. They spread them out. Hit them in some key spots. And I just had a feeling these six sadistic sons of bitches were going to sit there and say, 60 minutes isn't enough. Let's go do some sudden death overtime. But even that was done pretty well and positioned well, presented well. And ultimately, MJF wins and he retains. And Daniel Bryan, learning from his experience up with the Great White Organization up north, brother, he said, if I'm going to tap, I'm going to give it the Triple H tap. <laughs> 
Agar, which means uh, I'm gonna take a long time uh, and build this suspense uh, and make it feel like you were tapping out God himself, Agar, uh, before I actually tap, Agar. Fucking phenomenal. Like, you had different moments with MJ, with the blood running down his face, you know, looking all types of frustrated. This match ended up being great. It really did. This was the match I was looking forward to most heading into the pay-per-view, and it was easily, to me, the match that delivered the most at the pay-per-view itself. It was my favorite match of the evening, the match of the night, certainly is an early match of the year contender, and probably stays in that position most of the year. Because it actually meant something. It wasn't just them bumping, only bumping for 60 minutes. These guys actually told a fucking story. I absolutely love this. This is the type of stuff that I want to see AEW to be able to provide more often. Not necessarily 60 minute matches all the time, but you get where I'm coming from here. Like I said, generally a good pay-per-view. Middle suffered a little bit, didn't have my interest, but it was booked ended by stuff at the beginning and certainly the main event that I thought was fantastic. So let me know in the comments what you thought of AEW Revolution 2023. I was kind of sad, I got to admit, that there were no sparklers going off at the end of the main event. Like when you think about most memorable moments in AEW history, that is and always will be and will remain number one, just saying. But let me know what you thought of the show. Subscribe, damn it, if you haven't already. Subscribe! And follow the show on Twitter.